trying to go over a little overview again. Uh, last time we did an overview of uh, polynomials, we talked about the leading coefficient test. Now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about polynomials, but we're going to talk about zeros. And um, exactly what the you know, polynomial functions, we can talk about your zeros, and also we'll talk a little bit about turning points to start off with. So the first thing, if you guys just remember, um, when, when we're write, writing a polynomial, we're going to write it in descending order. And you know, here's our, our definition of polynomial. And of this definition of the polynomial, what we know is we have descending order of our exponents. So our, for our highest exponent, which we like to call our degree of our polynomial, is going to be our farthest left. And then from there on, we're going to have descending exponents. Um, of that, we're going to have, of that descending exponent, we have a sub n is our, like, what we call our leading coefficient. And these two are very important in helping us determine what is actually going to be the pattern of, uh, or the, I'm sorry, the end behavior of our graph. Now, the exponent tells us a lot of things. First of all, so n minus 1 is a maximum number of turning points. So this is the maximum number of turning points. And remember, a turning point is when a graph changes from increasing to decreasing. So um, if I was just going to draw like a sketch of something, okay, we have a turning point here, and we have a turning point here. So therefore, we know this is um, well, the maximum. Then, then we know that you know usually this is going to be of your third form, or that's the maximum that this could be. It can't be anything larger. It can't be an x squared. All right. Because I don't know the, actually the whole behavior of the graph, but it can't be an x squared if you're looking at this because, you know, 2 minus 1, that, there's two turning points. So it has to be of a, a cubic uh, function or a cubic function. Then the next thing is the other max. Max number of zeros. So therefore, the maximum number of zeros that this graph can have is at most n. It can have less, all right? But the maximum number it's going to be able to have, or it can have the same, but the maximum number it can have is n. So, you know, if I look at, you know, x squared, this only has one zero. However, now it has two zeros. But there's not any way that I can write a quadratic form, a quadra or a parabola and make it have three zeros. It's impossible. So the at most n number of zeros. So what are we really talking about when we're talking about zeros? Well, if we want to write down some characteristics here, uh, let's say A, I'm going to get rid of this so I can give myself a little bit more room. Let's say A is any real number. All right, so we have A is any real number, and my marker's already getting a little dead. So if a is any real number, we can say that x equal to a uh, is going to be going to be a, a zero of our function function f. So we're saying x is equal to a. Well, remember, if you're looking at an x and y coordinate graph. Remember, x is going to tell you everything that's on um, your x-axis. All right? The next thing is we need to know is x equals a is a solution of the equation when f of x equals 0. So what that's saying is the values of x and a make f of x equal to 0. Well, where is f of x equal to 0? Well, ladies and gentlemen, f of x is equal to 0 on the x-axis. Right? Because remember, here is, you know, here's your y-axis, here's your x-axis. Well, remember, when we're talking about functions, we're talking about an input and an output. So if you're, if you're putting something in on the x, but you're not getting anything out on this y, it's equal to 0. Um, 
And therefore, when we say that this is a zero, you can also say that x minus a is a factor of our polynomial. And a comma zero is an x-intercept. So there's a couple important things that are happening there. When we say that x of a, that well, x equal a is a zero, that means it's a solution that makes f of x equal to zero. So whenever we find something that makes f of x equal to zero, we found the zero of the function. The next thing is also, if we're saying, well, what about the factors? Well, the factor, given the zero, you can write it as a factor, as x minus a. And when talking about the factors, when talking about the zeros, when talking about the solutions, all of those are all the same thing. They're also going to tell us what are the x-intercepts of the graph, because it's going to be a comma zero, because a, remember, is equal to x. And x is going to tell you what's on the x-axis. So that's just a quick little overview as far as um, how to find the zeros uh, zero zone polynomial.